Good after, afternoon, everybody. Thank you for joining us and uh, hope everybody had a good Thanksgiving. Family and friends are important. We'll start off um, with the approval of the agenda. That is the Seniors Advisory Committee approved the agenda as circulated. A mover and seconder, please. Moved by Member Mayor, seconded by Member Brown. Any discussion on the agenda? Hearing none, all in favor? Looks like it's carried. Um, now we have a de declaration of pecuniary interest. If you have a, a pecuniary interest, please declare it now. If one arises uh, during the meeting, you can declare it then. Thank you. Hearing none, moving on to the approval of the minutes. The recommendation is that the Seniors Advisory Committee approve the 2023-09-11 meeting minutes as presented. Moved by Member Mayor, seconded by Member Kerr. Any discussion on the minutes? Hearing none, all in favor? That's carried, thank you. Presentations, Gray County Age Friendly Strategy Update from Stephanie Lacey Avon, Senior Planner at Gray County. Coordinator Thompson, did you wanna say something? Uh, thank you, Chair Silverton. Uh, Stephanie has joined the meeting uh, as an attendee, so I will promote her over to a panelist now. Thank you. And Stephanie, you should be able to um, turn on your camera and unmute yourself. Hi, Stephanie. Nice to see you. You're up. <laughs> Over to you. Thank you, Chair Silverton. Nice to see you as well. Um, and thank you for uh, to this committee for inviting me to, to speak. Um, I didn't put together a formal presentation, just hoping to provide some verbal updates of where we're at in terms of implementation of the Gray County's age-friendly action plan. Um, so I will offer just a bit of a, a verbal update. I have some notes here that I'll just take a look at. And then you're happy to answer any questions or go over any specific topics in further detail. Um, so one of the items that we're looking at focusing on in the upcoming months is to further um, further address um, areas that we can support age in place strategies. So we've had the University of Guelph students complete a study that spoke to um, addis additional residential units, and it's a bit of a guide and, and resource that helps inform how additional residential units can be developed. The province has supported additional residential units be permitted as of right, um, provided local policies have been updated to support additional residential units on all properties. And we see this as a really great opportunity to support um, succession planning on farms, as well as support um, multi-generational living on all properties. So we are currently in the process of supporting the local municipalities to update their official plan and zoning policies that would, as mentioned, give as of right permissions for these types of uses. And then we're thinking in the next year, 2024, that we would look at creating more um, how-to guides for local residents as to what they would need to do in order to navigate the, the planning process specifically if they wanted to proceed with development of this nature. And then we were hoping to connect with some individuals that have already proceeded with this type of development and share success stories, mm -hmm. either through video or print, um, and just looking at really capturing the local voice through that process and 
sharing it, sharing it locally, as I think that would be a great way to showcase how these new types of residential mm -hmm. structures are supporting um, our communities. Also looking at uh, creating a public engagement strategy, and this is more for county specific projects and making sure that when we have broad reaching projects that would extend to members of the public, that we have inclusive public engagement um, strategies and, and we have a policy that helps guide that. And then the thought is that if we've created something internally, we could share it with our respective municipalities as well and other organizations that may be interested. We're also looking at um, working in partnership with Sustainability Great Bruce and United Way with a community gardens mapping and promotion project. And so the Sustainability Great Bruce staff members have currently started this process in which they're mapping community gardens and they've included some information, but we're looking at extending that information that would be available to the public. So it'd be looking at capturing um, who the main contact would be if someone would wanted to register for that community garden, hours of operation, what's available on site, specific to accessibility. So are there benches, trees, water? Um, where can people access these locations through public transit? Um, what is the fee associated? So we have an extensive list of questions that we're looking to collect through through a data collection process of all identified community garden locations as well as potential future community garden locations. And then we're hoping to create a subsequent community garden guidebook that would help inform uh, retrofit as well as future development of community gardens through an accessibility lens. And so we're really looking forward to moving ahead with that project and offering support again from the sustainability uh, Gray Bruce, as they've already been doing, they've already been doing quite a bit of work in, in that area. Um, and then we are, we've created the Age Friendly Committee Advisory, sorry, Age Friendly Community Advisory Committee at the county. And the first meeting is in a couple weeks' time. It's early November. And the intent with this committee, and we're still trying to iron out the terms of reference, but we're really not looking to step on toes of all existing age-friendly initiatives and endeavors throughout our communities, but just looking to provide a bit of that regional resource base. And so um, in the more recent past, we've observed that there are a lot of great initiatives that are, are happening throughout Gray, and we're thinking that if there's a couple groups that are looking at uh, applying for a grant, for example, are we able to put that on the radar of, of everyone that's working in the age-friendly realms and maybe look at joint applications or um, looking at whether or not we can uh, make a project more regional focused um, if the project is being proposed at, at more of like a local context pers perspective. Um, so yeah, it's more just like a resource-based committee that we're only hoping to meet around two to three times a year and also just yeah connect with groups and have uh, individuals share what types of projects they're working on if they they are experiencing some difficulties challenges that need additional support um, are there potential spin-off working groups that could come from this committee um, where some some areas and gaps have been identified uh, more regionally and so really looking forward to, to creating that group again and not looking to reinvent the wheel necessarily whatsoever but just looking to mm -hmm. offer a bit of a um, a resource that uh, individuals regional wide can connect with um, to, to really further support age-friendly initiatives and then I have here civic awareness campaign and so through our the creation of the age-friendly action plan and strategy, we did hear from, um, and this speaks to a bit more of like the, the youth voice and that there weren't, um, a lot of our youth aren't overly familiar with what our local councils are up to and what types of jobs are available at our local municipalities and, and working for public sector and government. And so hoping to connect with some of the high school students um, as a bit of a pilot project and and um, 
either bring some of the county counselor, county counselors, sorry, to the classrooms or um, have the classrooms come to council and um, just start that information sharing and, and relationship building um, through through the county and the school system. And then we also had um, the Age Friendly Logo Project, which I believe came from from this this group, oh. or I could have that wrong. Um, but we we um, yeah we have that identified as part of a action item in our our age friendly action plan. And there have been discussions internally about the implementation of a logo that would speak to age-friendly specific initiatives or having some sort of age-friendly designation. And one of the key elements in order for that project to proceed would be to have some sort of qualifier that would um, serve the purpose of um, reviewing various bodies that would be wanting to receive that logo um, certification. And so one of the, my understanding is the town of Hanover is proceeding with a age-friendly um, business um, c- kind of checklist or, or um, sorry, I, I'm, the word's escaping me, but it, it's essentially like a age fr- age-friendly um, process in which a business can proceed with some sort of training as well as physical upgrades to their space that would make it more accessible. And we see that as as being a a big piece in helping support the logo project as it would serve the purpose of being that that more tangible um, piece that could help qualify businesses as well as other organizations and facilities um, as an age-friendly space. And so we have the logo project on our radar, but we we recognize that there are other pieces that have to fall into place prior to that one proceeding. And we just want to make sure that if we were to roll out the logo project, um, that there would be continual regular um, check-ins with those that have received a logo to make sure they're still in compliance with that certification. And that would likely have to occur maybe multiple times a year or year over year at least, such that it stays relevant in our community and and there is a recognized standard for what that means. And I think that's the extent of my list that I'd put together um, just in terms of our local updates here. And um, yeah, I'm happy to take any questions or offer any further points of clarification at this time, but happy yeah, happy to be here and connect with this group. Lynn, you are on mute. Thank you. I don't know how to mute and unmute on a cell phone. Sorry. Did you hear me? Great. Thank you. Thank you, Stephanie. Nice to see you again. Um, Any questions of Stephanie? Yes. Yes. Go ahead, Anne. You're muted. (laughs) Okay. I'm back. Okay. I'm on a phone as well. Um, I'm wondering something like the certification process, which I think is brilliant. Can that be shared with our group so we would know exactly what the details are for that? Yeah, for sure. So that's, uh, this is a great example as to why we're creating this, the countywide committee. And because it, yeah, just connecting with our local municipalities to to gauge and and understand what everyone's up to in terms of age-friendly initiatives. And so, yeah, it is on my radar we have a, a representative from the town of town of Hanover's age friendly committee that will be in attendance and getting further information around this um, business checklist checklist um, kind of guidebook resource that is currently underway is my understanding. And then if we can explore potentially um, regionalizing that check checklist um, or if there's uh, yeah, what type of resources we'd have to explore. Um, to make it relevant to all of our communities in Gray County. But yeah, that that's exactly the idea that we would um, have some sort of 
resource that we could share um, throughout Gray that would help with help with the implementation of a, a logo. Yeah, the idea is I think that the logo in itself would just be an award or a recognition of everyone having gone through a certain process, I guess. Is that correct? So there's a there's an there's two different action items in our plan. And so one of them is it speaks to the creation of a logo in, in that it would be recognizing spaces that, um, I guess it's more so speaking to probably a, an accessibility logo to, to some extent in that recognizing there's some spaces that have gone through the effort in making and specifically accommodating the needs for to meeting age-friendly community pillars. And then we have another action item that speaks to... Um, somewhat of a, a like a, a reward, um, like a, a public awareness campaign almost of individuals or organizations that have gone above and beyond in support of age-friendly initiatives or they've they've created spaces or they've they've held activities or events that are really that have been proven to be really supportive and inclusive of all community community members. And so yeah. But yeah, there's maybe two separate options and opportunities that exist that um, could ex extend um, and maybe, yeah, maybe not specifically both be called a, a logo, um, mm -hmm. but it would, yeah, it would be nice to get to that recognition um, component as well that would um, have some sort of effect throughout Gray County and recognizing those that have have gone gone above and beyond. And maybe that's yeah, a separate separate piece that maybe they don't get a logo or certification. They get some sort of um, letter or acknowledgement um, through the the county's communications or, yeah, okay. Thank you. Anyone else have any questions or? A st Stuart followed by Anka. Yes, uh, Stephanie, uh, nice to see you again. Um, one question is uh, the report from the University of Guelph students. Uh, was that just about additional residential units or was it about a general thinking for uh, for seniors uh, or extra, extra? In other words, perhaps we should have a copy of that at, at our at our level, I mean, the I think county does have it muted, but I'm not sure. A lot of the, uh, let's say, county uh, information doesn't get disseminated down into uh, into the various committees and things that I think it needs to be. So, if we could, uh, if if you could send that to Danielle, I'd appreciate that report. Um, one of the things many years ago, uh, I was impressed with. Uh, Huron County uh, and how they developed a lot of their different uh, committees and and uh, for example uh, each uh, each of the municipalities within Huron County uh, followed a basic template uh, on how to uh, de develop a strategic strategic plan and those strategic plans were then integrated into the master plan. Uh, I would like to see if that would be possible to think about age friendly in a similar manner. In other words, we have nine, hopefully nine age friendly communities uh, that each has sort of a, a, a set of uh, information processes that, that we would follow to make sure we're online. And then uh, several of the members of those committees could meet at the county level so that the county then had a way of uh, enacting legislation uh, and ideas through an active network of, uh, of, of municipalities. I think it needs to be a little bit more formalized uh, if, we, if we could think about that uh, to, to have a more you know, comprehensive use. Now, one of the things that we were talking about and, and uh, yes, uh, it was us that uh, did uh, ask for the county to have an age-friendly logo because we were following uh, Niagara Falls uh, uh, community and how they had created an age-friendly flag and there's a age friendly weeks and days, et cetera. So we just wanted to be able to, to have the county, which is the, our leader, uh, you know, be, be able to follow up on that concept. So, um, and uh, 
certainly we believe in uh, uh, community engagement, but we don't want to we just want to we want to be able to make forward progress rather than circles all the time. And we're, you know, constantly we've been making circles for years. Now, age friendly, you know, is uh, cradle to grave. It, and uh, it's unfortunate uh, that we uh, that we only are having the seniors arm of our community look at it uh, because uh, youth initiatives have fallen by the wayside in, in Grey Highlands. They tried. Nothing happened. So we need a, a you know, when you speak age friendly, it's that, that's that's a very serious a consideration that it is age friendly and that means from zero to to infinity so i think we need to i think we need to have a more um more thinking to try and get us all on board on the same that we're all uh, all on the same train and that we're moving ahead i'd like to see uh somehow that uh that 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 the, that uh we could have nine subcommittees that all feed into the into the gray county teams which you know you you are definitely the leader of and that we could think about uh, that I, I look at uh, various municipalities in Bruce County and how they're moving ahead with health and wellness health and wellness centers etc cetera, etc cetera. and, uh, and for example uh, gray Highlands are building new homes but none are for uh, the 55 plus crowd and none are for the uh, for the uh, you know affordable housing crowd either or attainable housing, so there's a whole disconnect and what's happening and actually the reality of what our needs are. So I think that's where an, a strong age friendly community group could uh, work with uh, with the economic development staff of, of uh, Grey Highness to try and make a comprehensive approach to solving problems and getting something done rather than just you know, going around in circles and then spinning our wheels, which uh, after many, many years, I'm kind of reached the end of my, my tether on spinning my wheels. My, my, I have no rubber left on my wheels. So I'm starting to squeak. Uh, anyhow, I uh, appreciate that you've, that you've been away and that, uh, that you're back in, 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 in your office now and that we can get something started. Hopefully uh, you'll think a little bit about my advice I don't know whether you need something from us uh, uh, to that, you know, a council is supportive of the age friendly. They said, yeah. Okay. So but saying, yeah, is only the beginning. Like, you know, that's one tenth of 1% of what needs to be done. So uh, we, we want to make our community a better place to live, work and play. So we need to have a, we need to have a process that, uh, that all of our municipalities can, can look at. Yeah, th thank you, Stuart, for your comments. And yeah, nice to see you as well. Um, yeah, a couple of really good points you've made. And, and this came up actually last week at the Gray Bruce Council on Aging um, session that we had in, in recognition that I think there's been a bit of a burnout post-COVID or during throughout COVID and um, some of the Council on Aging committees that that previously existed locally at our, our respective municipalities have disbanded for various reasons, and um, there just doesn't seem to be a strong network for age fr age friendly committees right now. And I think Great Highlands, as well as the town of Hanover, might be the only two in our area that have mm, a strong correct. presence with that. That's correct. And yeah. so. Yeah, I'm wondering if um, if there's something that we can think about um, as as you have an existing group and the town of Hanover have existing groups as to how we can maybe communicate the value and importance of these committees. Um, I think from my experience in just working on committees as well as just being part of groups, one of the and I think it probably speaks to some of your comments around spinning your wheels is that implementation of a project is what takes the work and we can get together and have these discussions and raise the issues and, and problems and gaps and opportunity opportunities but it's it's how do we actually make action happen and I think that's that's looking we're hoping to have with that as be the focus for this the county group as well um, where we'd then be able to report year over year um, what have we done in, in terms of age-friendly throughout Gray County and 
versus it. Yeah. Sorry. I guess it's just looking at what are, what are the implementation action items that we can actually move ahead with? Um, and yeah, what are those most, most pressing issues that need to be addressed? Um, well, so that, yeah, hopefully is, is going to appreciate be that feedback. And uh, has some, uh, yeah. some comments I know. And, and, uh, however, I think if, if we both agree that not something needs to be done, perhaps we can do some homework and maybe write a paper for ourselves and uh, get our council to say, and, and then that can go up with mm -hmm. our mayor and deputy mayor who are county councillors to, you know, to start to spread the word. Uh, I think they need, they need to be behind it uh, for Im implementation. We're, 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 we're very weak on implementation on a lot of projects. Okay. So, yeah, and I mean, uh, so be able anyhow. To express the value of, of what it is right. that these committees serve. I, right. I don't think it's overly the clear. The value analysis. Uh, yeah. There's a whole study on value analysis that's, that's out there. So, yeah. Okay. Thank, Sorry. Thank you. Thank you. First, uh, Danielle, uh, would you block uh, Member Brown's video and uh, make a phone call and check on her? She's fine. You're all right. I'm just con just concerned about your health. Okay, so so block your video, darling. Thank you, um, Anka. Yeah, um, just to Stuart's point, it, it seems like you know, people, various committees um, at various municipalities in Great County are making suggestions and working this jointly and so I thought if we really want to get ahead and work also in a reasonable way together um, it would be advisable if there was a strategic plan like that mm -hmm. we all get together and and set out the goals what do we want to actually propose uh, what ideas do we have and I, I don't know I I thought maybe some of the committees um, have already a strategic plan maybe we could use that as a template maybe um the uh, the county has a strategic plan template that we can use and then bring it all together um and in that regards i'm wondering also this um community advisory committee on county level uh, what what are the members made um, made out of like are those experts in the various things that as seniors we are interested in um, that could support us are they part of um, you know uh, the public um, county work do they work for the county do what kind of people will be part of that board to actually come up with a resource base and and support then our strategic plan so that we actually achieve something because when once we have a plan and a strategy then we can also say so this still needs to be done to achieve this or this and that falls by the wayside because right now whatever there's a hold up on this that and the other thing and so let's move on with something else i i think if we really want to achieve something we need to have a plan that's everywhere also in business. You need to have a plan to work towards. And the best thing to do that is also to do that, not disjointed, but jointly together with other committees. Um, uh, right. And, and I believe Stephanie um, referred to that, that uh, there are very few committees left under the uh, county umbrella. But uh, let's let Stephanie answer your, your good concerns. Um, yeah, so in, in terms of creating a, a strategic plan, I think I think that's a, a good suggestion. Um, I, I guess just my immediate thoughts come to um, who is that plan for? And I think a bit of the challenge is yes, there are maybe some disjointed efforts that happen throughout the county when it when it comes to age friendly initiatives. Um, and but there also are some that 
are working in, in collaboration and, and um, connection with one another. And so I, I think part of the process that we're hoping to do with the Council on Aging, um, Gray, Gray Bruce, as well as through this, this county committee is just understand what that network looks like. So who's connected to who, um, and then who's responsible for making whose work plan and what your work plan looks like year over year, who has the resources to help implement some projects related to age friendly. Um, so it, it is a bit tricky to navigate because we aren't necessarily the ones in a position to uh, dictate other work plans of individuals and, and committees. Um, so I think it's, it's going to be a bit of a, a balancing act to figure out how that system can maybe just be improved and ameliorated in terms of working a bit more cohesively um, and having a bit of that strategic direction um, without maybe handcuffing the, the various organizations to that as well. Um, I, th I think it's still really early stages, but I, I agree that having a strategic plan is, is ultimately um, such a helpful tool in, in guiding your work plan. Um, so, and, and I, I think one of our opportunities at the county is to create something like that internally and then offer that and share that with the broader group and then see if there's various projects that others want to collaborate um, through the, the completion of it, for example. And so um, there, there can be a bit of that um, at the initial stages, I think. And then I think it's just going to be a bit of a, yeah, growing pains and kind of figuring out how this whole system is going to work. It doesn't have to be with handcuffing, you know, it's just that yeah. all the various groups could feed into that template so Thank that everyone you. sees what's actually worked on and what is still in the box and you know what still needs to be done so that it's also easier for people to say so let's grab that piece and let's work on this one mm -hmm. or the other group works on something else and it could be under your leadership and i think perhaps under uh safe community not safe communities uh community the last one on my agenda is uh, yeah the uh, uh, community safety and well-being i think maybe their structure might be good for this for gray county or it may duplicate it but uh stuart has something to say okay. yeah stephanie you were going to uh you mentioned that there are two municipalities that are currently interested in age friendly and indicated such uh, you're planning to have a meeting in November. Uh, how would you, who would you invite? Uh, or how would, and how will you get it out to the right people? Uh, is there a plan? Yeah, so I, I think without understanding how that, that in this entire ecosystem works today, it's hard to really know who those right people are. Um, so what, what I did... Um, for the, the onset of, um, yeah, just the creation of this committee is I've connected with all of the organizations and groups, as well as members that were part of the creation of the age-friendly action plan at the county level mm -hmm. um, throughout, sorry, that, that they were part of the um, other uh, public consultation, public engagement sessions, as well we had um, stakeholder engagement sessions throughout that process. And so that's been my first step because those people, and it's quite an extensive list, would be most acutely aware of this project um, as they were involved from the beginning. But I, I do see this list of attendees evolving as, yeah, it, it might be just a an ongoing um item on the agenda to flag if there's anyone we're missing, um, do we need to bring them to the table, that kind of thing. Because it it's the network is really extensive and we just need to understand where the gaps are, but it's hard without having that conversation to start. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I can give you a bit of a an idea of who will be there. Um, so we have someone from the county's accessibility advisory committee which spans i 
don't know off the top of my head, but quite a few of the municipalities mm -hmm. in Gray. We have someone from the Alzheimer's Society, Gray Bruce, someone from the town of Hanover who sits on their committee, age friendly committee. We have someone from public health. We have a, a couple staff member from the county. So someone from our communications department, as well as our transportation department who runs the public transit system. Mm -hmm. We have someone from HCSS Gray Bruce, someone from Launchpad to try and capture that youth voice. That's the really tricky one because it's, it's uh, yeah, as you mentioned, mm -hmm. um, Stuart, it's, I think we, we forget about the youth and we're really trying to pull that into this plan. Um, we have someone from uh, sorry, the, the town of Hanover, who I believe is involved with the um, community safety and well-being initiative over there. We have someone from Mwikudong, um, who hopefully will bring in a bit of that diverse voice to the table. We have someone from OPP, um, as well as um, you, um, senior JCI. advisory for John John of JCI. That I mean, you don't have anybody that I heard there from South Gray Gray County, like from Gray Highlands or Southgate. And Joan Joan John is on council, and and she's the founder of JCI. She would have good ideas for youth. Um, also, there's Jenny Hanley from Gray Highlands, who does the Hanley Institute. So that was that way you'd be sure to get your youth covered. But we also need um, in-betweeners because we've got seniors and we've got youth. But there's like you, Stacy, and you, Danielle, <laughs> in-betweeners. <laughs> um, are you planning on adding to you to this this group or is it big enough as it is? It could be big enough, but not covering everybody. Yeah, so exactly. It, I think it's going to be a, an evolving list as time goes on. Um, and if we can create a bit of a, a, a formal network amongst those that are part of this group, right. that could then disseminate to their networks. Um, maybe, maybe you should uh, create three groups under the one umbrella, youth, seniors, and in-betweeners. I'm a poet and I don't know it. <laughs> but consider that. I, I would consider that. Uh, we have um, both uh, our members, Halliday, Mayor, and Kerr, very interested in this subject. So I'm sure they would be more than happy to, to chat with you should you wish to bounce something up. We have From, four people that are. Who's the fourth? Louise. Four. Louise. Yeah, yeah, Louise. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So even if only one of us went, uh, you know, yeah. at, at least at least there is a representative from the age friendly group in Gray Highlands, um, and uh, we can and, choose who who votes to that. Yeah. But it's important. And that, you're, uh, you're there's three the three groups. The three groups could meet separately um, and then quarterly all together, a representative or somebody from the three groups, and that would keep your size uh, usable. Anyway, um, sorry to interrupt there, uh, Stuart. Anybody, no, that's fine. Any, that's fine. Anything else for, for Stephanie? And I think we've bruised her quite a bit. <laughs> I shall recover, and uh, I'm, and and I, I'm, it's nice to see her, and nice to be able to yeah. communicate. So yeah. Thank you. And this is basically time. taking up something pre that was on a roll pre-COVID, and it's sort of hmm. ground to a halt. So it has to be re kick-started and uh, adjusted. So I thank you, Stephanie, on behalf of the committee for your your input. It's interesting. I found you interesting the other day when we met, and um, you're welcome to stay and listen in, or you or leave as, uh, if you have other other appointments. Yeah. So thank, thank you so much for.
for inviting me into this group and um, yeah, looking forward to connecting with you in the future. I will have to um, pop out. I've got lots of other planning matters okay. to deal with, but uh, yeah, looking forward to um, yeah, moving this, this whole initiative along. Thank, Thank you. you so much, Stephanie. Mm -hmm. um, I have a motion that the Seniors Advisory Committee um, receives the Gray County Aid Friendly Strategy Update for information. It's not a motion. I apologize. It's a recommendation. Moved by Anka, seconded by okay. Anne. Thank you. Any further discussion on this? All in favor? Thank you, Paul. That's carried. So now we have Paul. We get to see him. Uh, it's the update from the municipality. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. <clears throat> Uh, to report, this excuse me, but mainly on the recommendations that um, were put to council by the committee. Um, there were there was one that was not supported, and that was to have a senior section in what's happening. They just felt that when there's items to put in there, that um, they would they would be included that there wouldn't be a specific section for seniors. And then um, they'd like more details on the seniors fair. They didn't feel that they could support it, not knowing what type of fair, whether there's a budget required, things like that. So <clears throat> I did mention that I, I believe we've got money in a reserve. We do. Um, yeah. Maybe around four thousand dollars or something. So, um, anyways, that could um, should be discussed and more details brought forward for council. And then the uh, only other thing I uh, think, uh, um, Paul, Annette, Paul. <laughs> with the, yeah. with the with the seniors fair, um, there is money in reserves from pre-COVID. It was started. And then um, um, COVID eliminated it, and the funds we believe are in reserves under the seniors advisory. Perhaps you could check on that. Are you still there? Sorry, I didn't hear any of that. Okay, there are funds because we started to do a, a fair pre COVID. We were sharing with Southgate. Southgate does not have. Uh, seniors anymore, but it, it was requested back then that the funds go into reserves for when we can do it again. Yes, Danielle. Uh, thank you, Chair Silverton. If I may, um, we do have an agenda item further down today's agenda specific uh, to the discussion of the seniors fair request. So if we wanted to hold okay. uh, that discussion until I then, forgot. that would be great. Thank you. I forgot. Sorry, Paul. Carry on. Oh. I don't know if you can hear me. I keep everything's yeah. freezing on me. So the only other thing I have to report is that the municipality of Gray Highlands being the largest donor to the new hospital, we were given first choice of naming rights for department. And it was decided that the digital imaging department would be um, named after or Gray Highlands name would be associated with that. So I don't think there was anything else that happened in their last two council meetings that specifically um, was of interest to seniors or this group. Thank you, Paul. Any questions for of Paul? Hearing none, moving on. Um, the update from Karen. I'm sorry. Need a motion yeah. to, the, the seniors advisory to committee, re the municipal update for information, a recommendation. I'll move that. Thank you, Paul. Seconded by Stuart. Any further discussion? 
All in favor. Okay. Yes, Danielle. Um, I am just noting, I just would do a uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So uh, we would, I would just like to make you aware uh, with member Brown having uh, shut off her video, we need to make sure that we have a, a quorum when we're making um, motions and recommendations. So thank you, member Brown. I will turn your video back on for you if that's okay. Mm -hmm. Right. And we did have a quorum because there were five that's of us there. That's that's right. But we need if uh, the yeah, members it, it, that don't have their on. camera on could make sure to indicate their vote verbally. Um, that would be uh, of assistance. Okay. Yeah. It. Uh, my video won't go on. Um, um, uh, Marina. Uh, Danielle is going to do it for you. Okay. Um, Member Brown, I apologize. I'm not able to turn your camera on. My camera is sitting there and it is on. Like uh, my right, my little webcam okay. camera is on. Uh, okay, it says start it. There we go. Maybe. There, there we go. go. Oh, there we go. And I, I apologize for interrupting, Member Silverton. It's we just okay. need to make sure that we're... Um, Okay. maintaining a quorum thank you so moving on the update from council on aging uh that uh, uh we had a, a meeting on um last friday and uh it was in person meeting it was it was uh -huh. hard to get used to an in-person meeting but it was interesting, um, and as uh, Stephanie had um, mentioned before, there's only ourselves and Hanover and Meaford left in in the Gray and Bruce areas for seniors advisory committees. Councils elsewhere, like Southgate, like have decided not to to do it. I think it was because of lack of interest of applicants to make up the committees. Mm. Not that they were being nasty and cutting us off, oh, old folks off. It was because of lack of, of people mm. applying. So um, next time the call goes out, we need to make sure that people in other Grey Bruce communities are aware of it and... Uh, perhaps wish to apply. Uh, so when I do get the minutes to that meeting, I will be sending them to you for your information as I do always. Mm -hmm. I do that rather than wait for the next seniors uh, advisory meeting because some of the things are time sensitive, events that would be of, of use to seniors, etc. And I know that you get it out amongst the older communities. So uh, I would like uh, a recommendation that the Seniors Advisory Committee receive the Council on Aging update for information. Moved by Anka, seconded by Anne. All in favor? In favor. Thank you. Well, that's carried. Southeast Gray Community Health Center. Jeff, we got you. You're up. Thank you, Hi. Chair Silverton. Um, I don't have a very good video where I'm sitting because of the light behind me. So, and I was also eating earlier, so I turned my camera off. So you didn't have put to your see. head. Put your head to the right. Put you, there. That's it. That's perfect. <laughs> um, Nearly got you. <laughs> So okay. from the last meeting, I was asked to forward and to share some of the transportation options. So I'm mm -hmm. wondering if it's possible if I can do share my screen so I can just pull up that document in case not everyone has had a chance to take a look at it. Yes, Danielle. Um, 
Thank you, Chair Silverton. Through you to Jeff, um, we actually have that item listed farther down the agenda, Jeff. If so, if you'd like to speak to that item, um, we'll maybe do that when we get to that point in the agenda. Oh, I thought, uh, sorry. My apologies, I thought that's, that's okay. when we were on the agenda. That's okay. So, uh, we're at the Southeast Great Community Health Center update, uh, which is 6.3, uh, and um, the transportation options will be covered after um, uh, the next three items. I see that now. Sorry, I, I misread the agenda. Um, so I guess at this point then, I will uh, turn it back to you, Chair Silverton. I don't have any specific updates from Southeast Great Community Health Center. Um, I will just uh, report when it gets to my point on the agenda. Okay, so we don't have anything to receive from Jeff. Uh, so we will move on to 6.4, the Action Plan Subcommittee. Stuart. Yeah, the Action Plan uh... Subcommittee uh, has not uh, gotten together since our last meeting. However, uh, Louise did uh, did go and uh, and did attend the seniors' uh, presentation up in Town of Blue Mountains, and she wrote a report. and Council received it, and more or less, uh, Council has has approved it in principle. And we'll have to come back with with a budget on that. So, uh, but also we're kind of waiting to see where Stephanie was headed. Uh, and, uh, and obviously she was headed in a, in a broader spectrum than, than, uh, than I rather expected. I, I thought it might be a bit more focused. Uh, she's inviting everybody, but probably, uh, she might've even missed our committee uh, just as, uh, just for example. Um, and, uh, so I was really surprised actually that the various municipalities in Gray County had, weren't on board with uh, with age friendly community concepts. So obviously, I, you know we're supportive of it because we think it's important uh, for our community. So obviously, we've got to do some more research. I always said that uh, Gray County has nine legs, and they got to make sure they're all working uh, together so that they have smooth sailing. So uh, I think we'll have a, a bit of a meeting maybe when uh, Luis gets back and we get together, the four of us, and, and, and figure out, maybe do a little bit of research as to how other communities have tackled the age-friendly concept uh, and, uh, and that we, we actually maybe even try and create a template that could be approved by the county or at least is suggested by the county that this is a, a path to follow because we're not getting any, any implementation on any idea. The county keeps... It's got 50 balls in the air and, uh, you know, they bounce off the wall and, and nothing ever happens. So I think we've got to, we've got to focus uh, all, all good. At, I'm not criticizing the county because I, I just think they're, they've got a lot of implementation uh, issues and uh, they have got a lot of great ideas. We, we need to help them with the implementation. So the group of our group of four then will, 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 will convene to uh, more or less try and, try and uh, get some sort of template of what we think is needed. All right, so that's the update. Thank you. Any questions of Stuart? Hearing none, we need um, a recommendation that the Seniors Advisory Committee receive the action plan subcommittee update for information. Moved by Stuart, seconded by Anka. All in favor. In favor. Thank you. That was five. Moving on to the seniors by the Bay event request and council resolution. Will you be speaking to this, Paul? Sorry. Can you Will say you that again? I'm really having. The seniors by the Bay event request. And council resolution, will you be speaking to this? Mm, no, just it's pretty straightforward. It was just referred back to the committee to get more information. So, okay. Okay. Um, so, we'll, uh, that'll be part of our envelope of things yeah. that uh, our group of four will, 
we'll tackle it. It's good that council's aware of a successful right. event that was held in town of the mountains. And it was yeah. a well-written report and uh, it, we need to decide if we can implement uh, something like in 2024 uh, and how we would go about it. And so we will get back on that. Thank you. Any other comments? The move that the Seniors Advisory Committee receive Council Resolution 2023-808 for information. Move by. Stuart, seconded by Ann. All in favor? In favor. Thank you. Uh, local transportation options, Jeff. Six, 6.6. Now we can't hear you. You moved the wrong way. Move to the right. <laughs> Can you hear me now? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> okay. Just stick my face right in the middle there. Um, if I can share my screen, then I'll pull up the document. Um, I know it was circulated, but I think uh, I would prefer just to kind of quickly go over it and open it up to any questions that we might have. Um, okay, I'm hoping everyone can see that. Holy kiddiddle hoppers, that's tiny. Well, uh, let's see if I can make it bigger. Oh. If you could zoom into it, it would be great. Uh, in the lower right hand corner, there is a a like a magnifying glass with a plus sign. If you if you click that, you should be able to zoom in. Lower right hand corner. Are you you're speaking in, to me? Uh, yes. In the tools in the lower right hand oh, sorry. corner. Yeah, it's covered by it's covered by everybody's faces. Oh, there you should go. be able to drag that over. Yep. Yep. How's that? Aha. Uh -huh. One more. There you go. One more. That's good. That's good. Thank you. So this is a, an internal document that we use. It's not confidential or anything, but it's just a document that we use to share within the CHC uh, for the different people who might be helping uh, arrange transportation. Uh, could be someone in nursing, or it could be a social worker worker looking to help right. someone get to, to a trip. Um, but these are the main options available uh, for us in Gray County. And sort of our go-to one is the Home and Community Support Services. Um, it is a program that's available for anyone. It's available for medical appointments or things like shopping or trips to the bank, uh, whatever it might be. Uh, they run out of Owen Sound, but they have uh, drivers uh, across most of Gray and Bruce. There are pockets um, like Dundalk and south of Dundalk where they're a little bit short of drivers, so it's a little more difficult to get. But uh, Gray Highlands generally uh, isn't an issue to find drivers. Uh, like all of the transportation programs, there is a cost to it. Um, it's a minimum of $10, but they also charge uh, 45 cents per kilometer if it's over. They do have, uh, sorry, one second. They do have um, a subsidy program for people with lower income where they can uh, decrease the cost of that. The big thing with home and community support services is that they are a busy organization. They don't guarantee the ride. You do have to pre-register to become a, um, a client and they do require at bare minimum two business days, but they request or they ask that you uh, give them as much time as possible to find a driver. Uh, they will let you know within a couple of days ahead of the ride if they have a driver or not. And the challenge is, is they may not have a driver. It's not a guaranteed service. They'll do their best, but uh, they do not guarantee the ride. Hmm. Uh, Sogging Mobility and Regional Transit. This is the one that we've spent a lot of time talking about over the last uh, Few, several months, I guess. And it is not for everyone. Um, you have to meet the eligibility requirements. And it's for people that have got um, 
situations where they may or may not be able to um, get to rides or get to places because of physical or mental or visual, whatever type of impairment they might have, rather than go through the whole list, if you were to actually click on this little link here, it takes you right to their website and it shows the eligibility requirements. The key thing is that the eligibility requirements or the, the situation may be temporary or it may be permanent. Uh, for an example, if someone you know, breaks their leg and they're on crutches, well, they can use it during that time. Once they're fully healed, they may not qualify at that point in time. The difference also with this program is that it doesn't cover all of Gray and Bruce. Each municipality has to, for lack of a better term, subscribe to the program and that's you know, giving money towards it so their, their uh, residents are eligible. Um, and you can see, because this is, was done a while ago, that starting last May, of course, uh, Gray Highlands is now eligible and using the program. There is a cost for it. It's two dollars for a base rate plus fifty cents per kilometer. After that, they do have a minimum of seven dollars and fifty cents. Now, both Soggy Mobility and Home and Community Support they charge from where they pick you up to the destination and back. So they may be coming from one of the drivers may be coming from Durham to pick someone up in Flesherton. The client doesn't get charged for that trip. They only get charged from the from the pickup at their house to the to where the destination is and back. If it's a, a destination and someone is staying for say a doctor's appointment, uh, usually the first hour is free and then they can charge after that to, to wait. Um, sorry, one of the key differences between soggy mobility and home and community support as well, is home and community support will drive outside of the area. Uh, soggy mobility will not. They are a gray Bruce with the exception that they will go down to Orangeville or certain to certain places in Orangeville. Home and community will take people to London, to Toronto. Um, now having said that, is it's a lot more difficult to get a driver to take someone into London or into Toronto than it is to say run them up to the hospital in Owen Sound. So same similar that you must book, you can book by phone or you can book online. And they're a little bit more, I don't wanna say flexible, uh, but they do require a minimum of two days business notice. Uh, I will say that they will go out of their way to help. I'll just give a quick example. I'm not sure if I've said this example before to this group, uh, but my father was in Rockwood Terrace a couple of years ago. He had a fall. He had to go to the hospital by ambulance. Um, he was only there overnight and had to come home the next day. The only way, because he was in a mobility scooter, we could get him home was through sogging mobility. So they were able to say, yes, we can come uh, right away. They came, picked up his scooter at Rockwood. I went with the scooter to pick him up at the hospital and got him home. Um, it's not something that they always do, but they're, they try to be as accommodating as possible. And that's one of the things I like about them. Otherwise, we would have had to have my father stay a couple extra days, find a way to physically transport him to, to his into the vehicle and get him home to the scooter, if not for them. So uh, I really, I really appreciate personally and professionally their service. Now, the other options are taxis. Taxis are kind of few and far between in this area, but we generally use Graham driving service. Um, you'll notice on here, just for our purposes, I've got $12 for a Markdale trip or $1.75 per kilometer. <laughs> Excuse me. Because this is an internal document, we talk about how it can be billed. And if need be, we can uh, have it directly billed to us and we can potentially cover the cost of that in certain circumstances. So there is a protocol that we require to, to use funds for someone to do that. Having said that, we can also use that same protocol to cover the cost of a trip with... Um, Open community support or with um, soggy mobility as well too, if need be. Uh, we can have e actually we can have either one of those programs bill directly to us too if we need to. Um, I'll give you one specific example with home and community support. We have a gentleman who participates in the day away program. Uh, it costs thirteen dollars a week. He cannot afford it but it is a huge benefit for him to get out into the community and do that. So for $13 a week, we are covering the cost of that for him to get out. So we are able to do that on a case by case basis. Um, of course, there's a great transit route, which I think is a fantastic program. 
um, for a number of reasons. One, it's consistent. You know when your pickup times, your drop-off times are. It's not very expensive at all in my mind. Uh, $5 one way or $10 per round trip. You can pay cash when you're, if there's a spot for you, when you can actually go to the stop. If there's a spot, you can get on and pay cash. But they do prefer to, to book online or phone in advance to let them know that you're coming. Now, the challenges with this one are a couple of different things. Is the timing when they do run. Um, but I'll be honest with you, the biggest challenge that we have with this program is what happens when the client gets to to the drop-off spot. So as an example, if they're coming into Dundalk and they get dropped off at the arena, what happens if they have to get to the medical clinic or to the urgent center where we work? Then there's that challenge of getting them to that next spot. Um, it, can be, it can be even worse in Owen Sound if they're taking a trip up to Owen Sound, but once they get to Owen Sound, then they've got to get to the other side of the city, then they're having to find uh, their own transportation at that point in time. So those are the common challenges that we hear about that program. But as far as a trans, sort of a regional transportation program itself, it's it's I think it's quite good. Uh, the Ghost or the Guelph Owen Sound Transit um, probably doesn't affect us in the Gray Highlands area as much because it is a Highway 10 program. It runs from Owen Sound to Guelph with stops in between. Um, cash fares are a little bit different, but it's uh, they're no higher than ten dollars one way. Um, no advanced booking. It really is just like a bus that goes from Owen Sound to Guelph and back. Uh, there is a schedule so you can see where the stops are and the pickup locations as well, too. Uh, the other option in Gray County or in Gray Highlands specifically is a program called Driver Seat. In reality, what they are is they're just a taxi on a small bus. Um, hmm. They will go anywhere. They'll pick you up. They'll take you, you know, depending on the drivers that are available. The challenge with um, driver's seat is that they are very, very expensive. Um, we've tried to book them a couple of times. We, we had someone that needed to be picked up at Lake Eugenia and brought into Markdale um, because they charged from Owen Sound and back. It was going to cost between $250 and $300 for them to come to Owen Sound, pick someone up at Lake Eugenia bring them to Markdale, then take them home and go home. Um, a client just last week or the week before had looked into this because they needed a ride to Barry. Uh, and they told me, I don't know if this is true or not, but they told me it was going to be about $600. So it is an option that's available, but it's in my mind, not the most affordable. Now, the other thing that we have uh, with the community health center is we have a, um, Get, sorry, gas, gas cards available for our clients. Uh, we got some, some specific funding where we get ongoing specific funding for this where we can go out and purchase gas cards. Uh, it says Ultramar, but because we also uh, provide gas cards in Southgate and there's no Ultramar in Dundalk, we also have uh, SO gas cards. And those are given out on an individual basis and a situational basis. We specifically use those for people that need to get to a medical appointment, um, but can't necessarily afford the gas to get there. So if someone were say in Flesherton, had a vehicle, but the cost of gas to get up to Owen Sound for an x-ray or something like that was gonna be prohibitive, then we could provide them with a gas card. Uh, sometimes we can provide a gas card for someone that may not be able to drive themselves, but their friend will take them, but their friend says, well, you're gonna pay for my gas and they can't do that, then you know, that's something we can offer as well too. So those are, as I said, on a case by case basis. And that's not something that we go, go out and uh, you know, spread the word to the entire county um, because they are limited. Uh, we don't have a, an unlimited uh, stack of them. So when they're out, they're out. So we try to be, I don't wanna say picky with them, but we, we, we look at each case individually. Uh, this probably is not something that would affect uh, seniors specifically, but I think it's important for you to know is that if people are using Ontario Works or Ontario Disability Support, um, their benefits actually cover transportation to and from a medical appointment. Uh, the challenge with it is that quite often that um, has to come out of their pocket first and then they get reimbursed. 
Uh, if they're able to connect directly with their caseworker, sometimes the caseworker can book them a ride with say home and community support and be billed directly, but that all has to be done through the caseworker. So those are uh, the basic, I'm gonna stop sharing now, but those are the basic programs that are currently available uh, in Gray County and specifically Gray Highlands. So I know that was a lot of talking. I'll open it up if anybody has any questions. Uh, I'd be more than happy to try to answer. Thank you, Jeff. Um, one, of my, one of my questions, well, my question is, would you edit out some of the stuff that can't be told to the world and forward it to us so that we can spread the word about the transportation availabilities? Sure, I can, I, can, I can do that if that's something that you want to share publicly, absolutely. I think you want to edit out the gas card things and stuff like that. Yeah, I know I would, I would like, I would like yeah. to put some of it in, in my yeah. column, so. Sure, no problem, I'll take out that. I also will take out the part about emergency funds because again, those are, yeah. those are specific yeah. to the community health center. Okay, Thank I you. can do that. Any questions? Stuart. Uh, not a question, but a comment. And uh, thank you, Jeff, for that. It's a good comprehensive overview. Uh, I think uh, maybe more people need to know about it. I don't know whether, do you have yeah. a portal on your website, on the CHC website uh, that lists all that information in one, one, one area so that they don't have to go around and around? Or is there a, if, is there a search engine then on your website at transportation, uh, does it come up? No, not on our specific website, but that's not necessarily a bad idea. I've taken a note of that. Um, okay. What For most things, and I know it can be a little complicated and a little bit overwhelming, but for most of this information, it is available on 211. So if you were to go on to 211 right. and type in transportation for Flesherton, um, these options all should come up. So there is a central sort of location for it, but I'll be honest with you, it's much easier for me to put it together in one document than it is for people to be searching and clicking and doing all that fun stuff. Excellent. Excellent. I'd appreciate it. Yeah. Again, it's an information uh, crisis that we have in our rural communities. Uh, you know, Grey Highlands is, uh, is enormous in size. Uh, so uh, um, are you, uh, Let's say this, I would like at some point in time an information survey to go out to the community in, in of Grey Highlands from our committee just to be able to, we, we hear about people that don't have internet. We hear all kinds of stories. It would have to be through the direct mail. Obviously, uh, I think everybody has a post box, but we need to get more feedback from our community and make it easy for them to be able to answer those questions. I know they, they you know, when we had an internet uh, community, uh, we weren't sure how many people didn't have internet, how many people are, you know, have computers, uh, et cetera, et cetera. We, we need to get a good community cross-section somehow. And so that may be one of our goals for the seniors committee to, you know, to get more feedback from our community somehow. So I just mentioned that, you know, for a future agenda that we think about it um, because there's stuff out there that a lot of people don't know about. So. And uh, you know, what, Stuart, um, if if uh, CHC could make an application to Trillium, and we could do the mail drop. I know that, um, or I believe that the municipality is up applicationed out there, so uh, they won't have room. But it has to be a non profit that makes the application. We could maybe get that printed and mail dropped. Within, about the community um, endowment fund, uh, do they would they give money for uh, to CHC? We I do have mean. we do have money, uh, you know, money from uh, Gray Highlands. There is a Gray Highlands, uh, you know, group that is being funded by the uh, by the county and also by local citizens and things. So perhaps we need to maybe tap into that as a community fund resource as well. So. But, but are you talking about community foundations of Greybridge? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. We get grants and we work with them on a fairly regular basis. Yeah. Well, um, I know, and uh, but we do have a 
we do have a, uh, I don't like to use the word, but it, we have a Grey Highland silo uh, that's got funding in it. All right. And I don't know whether or not it's being, uh, uh, you know, whether the money is going out the way it should be. And, and again, maybe we need more money into it. So it's just one of those I things that, that uh, we need to just remind ourselves that we need some more homework. Well, I can tell you being on that Grey Highlands committee that it is being done properly uh, and the uh, Owen Sound group sends us annually what the interest on our donations to our yeah. silo is and it would not pay for a mail drop. It's always around about two to three hundred dollars. So, All right, so it would maybe not if pay we for save up two years we got we can do something. I'm just saying is that we need to we need to think more about uh, you know community engagement. Yeah. So, and it's not happening. I mean that information, uh, Jeff, is something we've been looking for for a couple of decades, <laughs> and so, and it's excellent. And and uh, and I thank you for it. Any other questions of Jeff? Yes, I. Well, I was wondering in the advance, maybe you could summarize it, and you you could put something in the local magazine. Newspaper. Well, I could put it in the in the in my column. Yeah. For free. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, you do that, and, and that's a good start. Yeah. That is a little bit trickier for me, but I think um, we have the information available at the health center. But there's also the doctor's office in Flesherton who are not. Yes, I can, I can get in there. Could go there. Uh, places like the churches, the libraries, that that sort of thing as well too. Uh, we work with, as an example, the food bank to make sure that they have this information. So we, with the different organizations, we do work with them. Um, the library at, at one point had this, I'll follow up. I've got a note to follow up with them to see if they've got the most up-to-date stuff. So there's different routes that we, that we can definitely take. Um, yeah. So it's, uh, I think the, the key thing, the way that we try to promote it is that there's a lot of information there. So if people have questions about it, we provide the basic information and then they call me to get the detailed information right. because I'm also the guy that can get them registered online or, or again, if there's a oh, financial good. situation, then I would address right. that. Good. That, that's good too. Um, and, and um, putting it in various places is excellent. And we can depend on word of mouth. However, the the shut-ins that don't get it, that's why I yeah. personally prefer the mail drops. But anyway, anything else? And I won't interrupt. Well, you had your chance. Hearing nothing else. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you, Jeff. That the seniors advisory committee received the local transportation options discussion for information moved by uh, Marina, Member Brown, seconded by Anka. Any further discussion? Paul, you just no? Okay. All in favor? In favor. Thank you. That's carried. Thank you. Chair Silverton, um, if it's okay, I have another meeting that's happening behind me in about eight minutes that I need to prepare for. If there's no. nothing else, no. if it's okay, I'll leave the meeting. Yes, to the it rest is okay. Of it. okay. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Jeff. That was great. Thank you. Okay. So 6.7 is Grand Pals discussion. I would like to ask Coordinator Thompson to, because it's on my phone, to let you know what uh, she brought forward on on this issue and others that may affect us. Danielle, can you look it up and? Uh, thank you, Chair Silverton. Uh, yes, through you to the committee. Um, I I did spend some time reviewing uh, this Grand Pals program uh, uh, item that uh, Chair Silverton had circulated to the members of the committee. Um, and I did also, through some other research that I was doing related to this committee, I, I noted that this uh, Grand Pals program was uh, received through a delegation 
Yes. To Seniors Advisory Committee uh, back in July of 2022. Um, and so in reviewing the program, uh, along with uh, the, the mandate that's indicated in the terms of reference for the Seniors Advisory Committee, uh, and looking at them kind of in parallel to one another, I did advise uh, Chair Silverton uh, through discussion with the clerk um, that the uh, participation uh without council's direction uh, for the committee to take part in or uh, investigate a uh, proposal such as this um, wouldn't be, uh, it wouldn't fit within the mandate for the committee. Uh, so there's no outright ability for the committee to go ahead and uh, take part in a program like this. However, um, there is a portion of the uh, mandate um, which indicates that the committee is to provide information on age-friendly programs and initiatives in the municipality of Grey Highlands. So uh, the committee could uh, make a recommendation that council be aware of the uh, the existence of this Grand Pals program uh, and and indicate their wish uh, through that recommendation as to whether or not they would like to participate. Uh, but it would be... Uh, as a recommendation as a support role that um, the committee make a recommendation to council for council's approval to engage in this type of a type of a program. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So another since reading that I another thought I had was that perhaps the Hanley Institute would take it on because they have the youth and um, that we would help them in any way, just individually rather than as a, a committee. Um, but also, uh, I agree with what Daniel's saying. We should uh, advise council of our support of this program and whatever they can do to to uh, publicize it for us. Stuart, you wanted to say something. Yeah, this uh, is another committee. This is death by uh, a thousand committee cuts. Yeah. Uh, I, I think we, I mean, we, we're we aware of it, but if we don't focus, we're never going to get anywhere. So I say we focus on age friendly at the BOD spectrum, and maybe we can learn something from you if you're following this thing. Uh, but I I just don't think we need to get involved in too many too many organizations. There's too many out there that are, still spinning their wheels, health and wellness and everything around, and immigration, et cetera, and nobody seems to be doing anything. So uh, not, no, not, no disrespect, it's just a lot, it's tough to get something done. So I would say we receive it for information, Lynn, and uh, uh, I, don't, I think this committee has enough on its plate. I agree. If you would like to uh, move that, uh... Recommendation? I will. Seconded. Help. <laughs> Seconded by Anne. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All in favor? In favor. Thank you. I didn't see your hand, Marina. You no, there you go. I got your thumb. Thank you. <laughs> That's carried. Now we move to the Grey Bruce Safety and Wellbeing Planning Advisory Committee meeting. This was a meeting that I attended and I sent the information to you for your information. Um any questions on it? Any since you've attended, Madam Chair, have you got any suggestions what we need, what we can do with this to, you know, at our committee level? I mean, it's we can receive it for information, or we can we can take some sort of, uh, uh, you know, steps in it. Uh, I mean, we all we all believe in health and wellness, but I think we can't be all over the place. So. Uh, um, I, I, I respect that it's there. Okay. Uh, and if you have, and you sit on it, right? I do. However, 
However, uh, well, I'm, my there, I'm there representing the police services board, and I have nothing to recommend to them. And we do have a municipal representative. It used to be the clerk, and then it was uh, the deputy mayor, Dane. I don't know who it is now. Perhaps Danielle knows. I think Dane is on this committee, yeah. I don't know if he's still on it. Yeah, I think so, he did. So, there, right, was so a present, there was a presentation made to council, um, and um, at that point, they, they approved the plans. That was a few years ago. And we're now meeting simply to get the update on the various groups that were created to do these plans. Um, it's to keep the police aware of safety or the safety, the police are advising the other groups. So it's more of a um, combination of different groups keeping each other informed, which was really quite, quite different from uh, everybody doing their thing and nobody knowing what they're doing, the, what the other group is doing. So... Um, here is your well, reminder. Well, it is good uh, that the county is doing something. In fact, you know, they're worried about the homeless and the drug, drug yeah. issues. And social welfare is at the county level, not at the municipal level. So right. uh, I know uh, Great County was even looking to, to buy a motel, to, you know, to help things out, to reduce costs and things. So I'm not sure where that's going, but uh, obviously they're, they're on top of this. And it's good to receive this for information, which I would except uh, uh, thank you make the motion to receive it and keep us informed if there's anything yeah. we can do uh, to move on anything let, let us know thank you and a seconder would be I see you Mar um, <laughs> thank you Anka so uh, Danielle you had a comment uh, thank you, Chair Silverton. Uh, through you to the committee, I can confirm that uh, Deputy Mayor Nielsen is the uh, council appointee He's to the Community it. Safety and Wellbeing Plan Advisory Committee. Thank right. you. Thank you. I didn't. I I knew he was. I just didn't know if he still was since he became Deputy Mayor. Okay, so there is a motion there to receive this. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, all in favor? In favor. Thank you. That's carried. Now we have a member's privilege. Anything and anything coming up, uh, Anchor? I just have a quick question because we uh, briefly addressed it at the last meeting and then I was just wondering where that stands um, regarding in-person meetings. We wanted to delay it to next year. Is there any plan like when those will take place? We will, well, uh, normally uh, other committees have opted to do it in better weather. So we'll have it on. Uh, in the spring. We did get our schedules for next year, but we have to decide on which two, two meetings we want to do it. Yes, Danielle. Oh, thank you, Chair Silverton. Um, through you to Member Mayor, uh, if I may, uh, at the December meeting, uh, the with SAC meeting on a monthly basis, uh, the terms of reference indicate that prior to January of any given year, the committee sets out its um, schedule for the upcoming year. So uh, it is uh, my intent to provide the committee with uh, a draft uh, recommendation for a schedule for 2024 at the December meeting. And uh, at that point, the committee can indicate which two meetings they would like to host uh, in person. Uh, that recommendation would just require a, a minimum of a two thirds vote. Uh, and then we the committee will be aware of specifically which meetings will be held in person uh, and the location uh, at which that uh, me in-person meeting would take place. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, any, any, yes, Stuart. Well, just as a member's privilege, uh, I was pleased to see uh, a, a project being uh, rolled out in, in Flesherton. We, I think we need more of them. 
uh, where rental housing for, uh, I'm not sure whether it's uh, 55 plus or not, but it, it is rental housing. And uh, I think uh, we, we actually need more of that uh, kind of uh, concept in our community. And I, I mean, I looked at the Center Point South and if I was 40 years of age and had some money, I would certainly want to locate there. But at the age of 84, I'm not going to go and undertake to buy a house and cut the grass and do all and wait for the trees to grow. So uh, I think we're I think there's a missing middle of type of homes that are available, uh, should be available, you know, for for the for the uh, 65 plus. They aren't they aren't being built in our area. I was over at Port Elgin on Saturday. They're doing gangbusters over there. They're doing stuff in Meaford. They're doing everything in that to address that need, but nothing in our community. So uh, I think I've, I do sit on the economic development uh, committee. So I'm going to be a bit of preaching uh, uh, that that we need to have a, a housing committee somehow that uh, that meets with developers to try and and, and you know our staff as well. But uh, you, you know that there is an urgent need. Now, there was going to be 14. Uh, homes built beside the uh, the uh, curling rink at one time, and that fell apart. But that builder went on and built some very, very nice similar homes over in in mm -hmm. Meaford, along the golf course. There's nothing for that for, for, for uh, available in this in this area. There's all kinds of them over in Chesley. There's all kinds of them in Walkerton. We have nothing to offer that particular crowd. So we need to uh, emphasize that that is a major need. And uh, whether it's through our economic development or council, we need to we need to let people know that, uh, uh, you know, that that is a need. And it's great to see Jeff Colton doing something in Fleshman. Right. Thank you. Yeah. And and we need to get maybe a senior on council. <laughs> I tried. OK. Any other members privilege? Hearing none. The next meeting is November the 20th at 1.30. And again, it's uh, virtual. So now I would like to ask for a motion to adjourn. A motion. Anka, thank you. And seconded by Anne. So all in favor? In favor. Thank you, Paul. We are adjourned. Lovely to see everybody again. And we'll see each other next month. Thank you.